Welcome back to the rating climb. We're 540 climbing up the, ra the rating ladder here on chess.com. And I've got some new opening requests from you guys. So thank you, everybody who commented on the previous episodes. We have the Bush Gas Gambit is a new one on my list and the Budapest Gambit. Okay, the Budapest Gambit is something you play as black against D4 and the Bush Gas Gambit is something you play as black against E4. And I was trying to, pl trying to play the Scotch Gambit as white. So I'm going to keep trying to do that. Unfortunately, you can't really play it against D6. So we're just going to get two pawns in the center. Um, so yeah, we, we've been having a rough... Wow, wow. All right. We've been having a rough time playing the Scotch Gambit, and it looks like it's continuing. I don't know if we're going to see the banned Gambit here uh, or not, but I'm going to just develop my knight, get control of the center, develop the pieces quickly. That's usually how you want to respond to these weird openings. Oh, and there it is. There it is. I believe this is called the banned Gambit. I don't know where that originated from, but I'm going to take it. Apparently, it's like somehow grandmasters have been winning games playing this, but of course, rooks are better than bishops. I'm going to make the trade, okay? Five points. I only lose three points. This is generally why you don't want to start with these side pawns because you can't even really get your rooks out without the bishops just taking them, all right? So it's, it's really not a great strategy. And our opponent now doesn't even take the bishop back. So I'm going to save my bishop. I kind of want to go here and pin the queen, but what's the problem with that? Well, it's not really a good pin because c6 would just block, and then I have to waste time moving my bishop. So I'm, instead, I'm going to go back all the way to c4 and line up over here on the weak pawn on f7. So, I I mean, I don't really know what to say. Our opponent is not uh, obviously following opening principles, not really paying attention to the pieces and doing a blunder check. So not a great way to start the game, and we'll see what they're going to do from here. <clears throat> My plan is either to continue to develop in castle or maybe try to attack here. Uh, okay, they block that off. That's a good move. So dealing with the threat on the weak pawn, at this point, I think we just continue, get all the pieces out, and get ready to castle. All right, to so d5. Uh, whenever there's tension, I always want to stop and ask myself, okay, is it defended enough times? So let's see. Takes, takes, takes. No, it's not. I can just take it. And there's another reason why I would like to take this pawn. What do you guys think it is? Well, not only am I winning the pawn, the other reason is it's opening up the e-file. And since I'm ready to castle, and black is not, because they still have these two pieces in the way, most likely I'm gonna be able to get my rook here. And <laughs> All right, so of course I'm, I'm making these plans, but at the end of the day, I'm going to react to what my opponent does, and if they make blunders, I'm just gonna take advantage of them. And so this is, this is really common, I mean, yes, you want to make plans, but at the end of the day, you, ju you just got to take the pieces. So, I mean, okay. Take the queen, we're going to castle, and then bring the rook over. Our opponent is not doing a good blunder check, right? If they should, What they should be doing is every move, before you move somewhere, you think, okay, I want to move here, but let me just check, can any of my opponent's pieces take it? Yes or no? Oh, yes, I, could, I shouldn't go there, right? All right, so how do we want to get out of the check? I have two moves that I think are, are good moves here. All right, so option number one is c3. And the reason I like that move is because it creates a nice little pawn chain. It also gains a tempo on the bishop so that I can do something else next and black's gonna have to waste time moving their bishop or I just take it. The other move that also looks good is bishop d2 because I'm developing a piece, right? So both of these look totally fine. We'll just go with c3. I usually like to go with the tempo gaining moves if possible. It just kind of speeds things along, and a lot of times you can get your pieces out and doing stuff before your opponent can really react. Okay, so they just sacrifice again, not really, maybe our opponent isn't aware of the piece values, but a bishop is three points. You don't really want to trade that for a pawn. I'm taking with the knight because I want to bring my knight away from the edge of the board, more towards the center where it can continue to play a role in the game. Okay, again, I'm going to check what they did. I'm going to see if I have a capture, and th this is a very weird game. Um, I, we've played some 400s that were that were playing better, so I'm not really sure what, what this person's doing, but um, we're just going to take the pieces. Still probably going to castle, and then we're kind of to the point in the game where I can start looking for checkmates. So, um, <clears throat> all right, let's go ahead. Let's castle first, probably bring the rook here, and then once we bust open the center, it's going to be very easy to checkmate the king. 
Okay, so rookie one d5 is pretty much the plan here. So uh, when we play as black, I'm pretty excited to uh, play these gambits. I was I was doing some homework before this video, uh, just going over some of the basic lines because I'm not really that familiar with these gambits, the Budapest gambit and the Bush gas gambit. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what I've learned. Okay, so I I would like to attack the king, but he's sidestepped the the rook so that this guy's no longer pinned. Okay, so how do you think I should go about attacking the king? What's my, my best course of action here? Well, I think the answer is to still play d5. And yes, the pawns can capture, and yes, there's no pin, but what I'm going to be doing is sacrificing a piece to open up the king. Now, of course, it's, it's a lot easier to make this decision because I'm up so many pieces, right? Our opponent has sacrificed their rook and their queen, their knight and their bishop, so I can do this without even thinking. But even if they had some more pieces, the principle of their king is in a weak spot my pieces are pretty much ready to go and attack. If all of those things line up, you're probably justified in sacrificing one piece for a couple pawns, right? Which is what we're doing here. So, but again, it's not really a fair fight because I have just so many extra pieces. So here we go. There's the immediate checkmate. There's another checkmate. Uh, the king can't run. We could use the knight if we need to. Probably aren't going to have to. I think one of these is probably going to get the job done for us. But um, yeah, that's that's basically it. So. <clears throat> okay, so that doesn't really deal with either of the checkmate threats, and so I'm just going to go with this one. It seems like the easiest. And pretty nice game there as far as accuracy. I don't know how much you learned from that, but it is what it is. Yeah, 97. All right, let's move on to the next game. I don't think we need to spend a lot of time there. Oh, let me go ahead and update the wins here. Puts us at 19. And jump into the next game. All right. So like I said, against D4. Okay. Against E4, we're going to play the Bush Gas Gambit. So it's E5, and we're hoping for Knight to F3. Oh, man. All right. Well, uh, Wayward Queen Attack. So there's two ways you can play against this. The, the standard way is to defend your pawn. And what White is probably hoping for is that I play G6, and then they're going to come in here and fork me. Or they're hoping that I just don't pay attention and, and let them checkmate me on f7. Okay, these are kind of the two ideas behind queen h5. So defending the pawn here is the first step. And then after bishop c4, I could play g6 because there's no longer a fork because I've defended it. But what I'm going to do instead is play something that's called the kitty counter gambit, I believe. Where I'm going to actually gambit this. Yeah, kitty counter gambit is the name. I'm going to actually gambit this pawn. They didn't want to take it. The idea is if they take it, you block. And then you gain time attacking the queen later. And you just get a bunch of pieces out really quickly. It's, it's a lot of fun. Now, this, I think, is a very bad move. And why do you guys think that, that I think this is such a bad move? Well, the reason is it lines up with, or it's, in, it's on the same diagonal as my bishop. So whenever you have long-range pieces that are lined up, you always want to ask yourself, is there a way I could take advantage of that? And I think the answer is yes. And I could actually do d6 to attack it and also defend my pawn. But since I was going to gambit the pawn anyway, I'm kind of wanting to play d5 and allow them to take it, then play bishop e7. Now, I do have to see what happens if they take here. I would probably castle and then use the e-file to line up on the queen. I think that looks totally fine. So I'm going to go with the more aggressive move here with d5. But it is a, is a sneaky attack here. And so we'll see if our opponent notices the fact that their queen is, is being attacked here. And again, it goes back to that the concept of if you can achieve multiple things with the same move, that's probably a good move. I'm I'm attacking, I'm getting control of the center, I'm letting out my bishop all at the same time, right? This is what I, I mentioned. I'm going to play bishop e7 here. And the reason is if I can castle next move and get my rook to e8, white is in big trouble, right? White's in big trouble because the queen's going to be there, the king's going to be there. Okay, they decide to just move. So a couple of options. I think the most logical is to just castle to defend the pawn by castling and again gets ready to put the rook there we could also consider something a little bit more crazy like sacrificing this pawn and then playing bishop to f6 that's not totally out of the question but i think i would rather just castle and go ahead and get ready to play rook to e8 
It's kind of like a race a lot of times. If you can get your rook to the center before they castle, usually good things happen. Okay, and I'm about to win that race here, and so we'll see. Classic example, right, of bringing out the queen early and moving it around a bunch, not developing your pieces. And you're going to see how that just doesn't, doesn't usually end well for the player moving the queen so much. So let's see how they're going to proceed here. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to push the pawn forward or maybe take here. They take here. Um, we could just immediately go. Okay, they do go e5. All right. So I can immediately go rook e8 now, actually. And it's taking advantage of the fact that if they take, I take back with a check. And all of a sudden, they're losing their queen. So it's a tactical way to kind of defend my knight. And this is a move I wanted to play anyway. So that seems really, really good. Now, I could also move my knight somewhere and create a discovered attack. So I want to at least consider that because we could go knight to e4. We could go knight to g4, attacking the queen. And then the queen has to move. I don't know what my follow-up would be. I think I'd rather get the rook involved because that's a very clear threat. And so let's go ahead with the rook to e8. A very tricky move, I think, for a lot of people to see here. Let's see if they're going to notice that if they take this, they lose their queen. See if they notice that. Okay, d4. So they avoid the little trap. And I, I don't, that's probably not a bad move. It actually defends the pawn. So very surprising that they saw that, but good, good for them. All right, so what do we do now? I think that I can either continue developing something like this or try to take advantage of this. It seems to be the two things that are jumping out at me. So let's actually reconsider this move. Where is the queen going to go? That's kind of the big question. I don't know exactly. Looks like I'm controlling quite a few squares. I think it would probably most likely go back to like here. And then we could play something like this, which looks like it maybe wins a piece. Ah, uh, there's f4. Yeah, it's, it's getting a little tricky. So if I want to just develop another piece, there's c3. Um, I, yeah, I just, I don't know. Sometimes I'll play a move and I don't, I haven't analyzed every single possibility. I just play it on principle and the principle of like sinking my knight into the center feels pretty nice to me. So I think that's what I'm going to play now. The only reason that I'm hesitating is because I didn't really want to block my rook. I wanted to potentially leave that open, but I think we can very easily move our knight later if we need to. Okay. So let me go ahead, knight to, to e4, put the pressure on the queen and that's just a very powerful knight now on e4. So we'll see what white's going to do. I assume they're going to save their queen. And... Okay, queen to f4. So what is the problem with that move? And I kind of maybe gave this away earlier, but what's the problem with that move? Well, I think it's this diagonal right here. Okay, the, notice the bishop's undefended. And so if I play bishop to g5, the queen has to move somewhere off the diagonal, otherwise I'm going to take it, then I'm able to take the bishop behind there. Okay, so they, they kind of walked into that tactic. Um, maybe a better move for white would have been like queen h5 to try to avoid that. It's, it's tricky to find a place for the queen to move. It doesn't have a lot of squares. And you could see how even just with a couple pieces out, I, I'm already like, able to create these situations where they just walk into a tactic. Okay, so here we go, bishop g5, just a simple little um, skewer. I guess this would be a skewer. A pin is when the, the high value piece is behind. A skewer is when the high value piece is in, in front. That's kind of the difference. So this is a skewer because the high value piece is in front, but behind we have something that we're gonna take. So the queen has to move, we grab this, and on top of that, we're also threatening to get the rook in the corner as well. So it's a really nice position for us. But I will say, you know, our opponent did at least notice that the, the rook was threatening some stuff, and they did a nice job of, of dealing with that, okay? But there's just too many threats in the position. So we'll take that and win the piece. And this is also um, not a super easy threat to deal with. Maybe they could play something like queen b3. Because uh, if you move the knight, I could still take it and it's going to be like a fork. And you can't move the knight there. Here, again, it's a fork. So it's not, not an easy position for white to be in. Okay, they do play queen b3. Um, so I think 
I'm scanning for tactics. And I, somebody asked a question that said, what do you, what exactly are you doing when you say you scanning, you're scanning for tactics for a few seconds? I'm looking at the king. I'm looking at the queen. I'm looking at these pieces. Do I have a way to checkmate, to take the queen, to fork the king and the queen, to pin the king and the queen? That's what I'm looking for very quickly. So do I have checkmate? No, that's not checkmate. Uh, you know, is this going to be checkmate? Maybe, but they could probably block me. Okay, like, is this going to be check? I can't go there. That's what I'm looking. Can I sacrifice my rook? I'm doing it really quickly, but that's the kind of stuff I'm looking for. Can I take this and trap the rook? No, it's not defended. Maybe it's a sacrifice. Wait a second. Uh, no, I don't really see a follow-up. Okay. Queen, is the queen in danger? That's a fork. No, that doesn't make sense. I just lose. That, that's what I'm doing just super quickly, and I don't like usually say it out. So I don't see any tactics. I just kind of checked and kind of walked you through what I was thinking about. So what's the next thing that I'm going to do? Continue developing, I think. So let's play knight c6. It comes with a threat, and it develops a piece. So that's great. And if they defend this, I'm actually considering sacrificing. So this is a situation similar to last game where I sacrificed a piece to open up the king, right? Sacrificing a piece here to, to get my rook involved seems very reasonable. Okay. Tricky move. There's something I have to watch out for. What is it? Well, um, the answer I was looking for was the rook on the corner is attacking my bishop. I don't want to just lose that bishop. Okay, so that's kind of the discovered attack here that I have to pay attention to. Now, knight takes d4 just looks amazing. It's a free pawn, but it also attacks the queen, also threatens a follow-up fork. The other thing that looks amazing is maybe just going here with the check, forcing the king to move. Also looks very good. Yeah, because if we go here first, if the king goes up, we have the fork. If the king goes here, we have this fork. Now we would lose the bishop. Uh, we could take first and then get the fork. So that seems great. This also seems great. The question is which one's better? Uh, I don't know. Where does the queen move? Does the queen take this? Maybe there's just forks. Every, I mean, I'm really torn between doing this, getting the fork, and just taking here. I feel like I'm going to take here. They both looked really, really good, but we'll just go with this one. Sometimes it doesn't matter if you have two like really, really good moves rather than waste all your time trying to figure out which one is actually best. Just play, just play one, save some time, play one of the really good moves. As long as they're both really good. Sometimes it's, it's like, no, one's bad and one's good. You have to figure out which one it is. But in this case, I think they're both really good. Okay. So let, what I'm doing now is like scanning, like starting with this move because it's a check. So it's a forcing move. That looks really good. Of course, we could take and then go for this. We could also take here in some situations. Ooh, yeah, there's almost, mm, like there's almost, there might be a checkmate here is what I'm thinking, basically. Even like bishop here. Yeah, so should I start with this move? Ah, uh, because yeah, if the king moves here, we actually have this tactic. Okay, so basically, uh, the, the knight is defending the queen. So if I can get rid of the knight, I can take the queen for free. But if I just take the knight now, he's just, just going to take my queen. Oh, I say that. There's, there's actually checkmate. Look at that. That's a beautiful checkmate. That's a beautiful checkmate. I'm going to go for it. I was thinking I couldn't do this because the queen would take me. But then, then there's an incredible checkmate. Wow. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Wow. And of course, if they take, then I'm just going to win the queen for free, and there's going to be checkmate soon to follow. Yeah, super nice move here. Look carefully at the king. Bishop controls, knight controls. So it's trapped. It's trapped if I could deliver a check. And there we go. We're going to see it. If I could deliver a check, it's checkmate. And how can I do that with my knight? Wow. What a, what a wild... I mean, that is just... <laughs> okay, that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And I didn't see that initially. I just kind of popped up out of nowhere. All right. Good game to our opponents. Let's check the re review here. 82. Yeah, well, tricky positions. I probably missed a few tactics there along the way. But overall, I think we played didn't play too bad. Okay. Let me update the, the wins here. And we'll jump into a new game. How does that look? Yeah, that should be fine. Okay. And we're still trying to play some of these openings, but we got to see the kitty counter gambit. So let's go into a new game. All right, let's go for a scotch gambit here, guys. E4. And uh, hopefully we see E5. 
Very good. We can play knight to f3, attack the pawn. And a lot of people will defend with the knight on c6. Hey, there we go. Great. So the first step in playing the scotch gambit is to play the scotch game, which is d4. And most people take the pawn. It's really the best move, I think, for black. There's not a whole lot else that you can do here. Um, okay, they decide to play knight of six. I don't think that's a good move. And a lot of times with, when the knight comes to f6, if you can push or capture and get a pawn on e5 to chase it away right away, it could be bad news for your opponent. Okay, and I think that's what's going to happen here. So I'm going to take this. And the problem, is, yeah, a lot of people will, will try to jump in here. The problem with this is that the knight is awkward. It doesn't have places to go to. You can't go back here because my pawn. You can't go here. You can't go here or here or here or here. You only have like one square that you could go to. And it's sort of like an awkward square for the knight to have to like jump to east. It's just not where the knight normally likes to be. So the question is, how do we take advantage of this? I think I can play bishop to c4 here. And that sets a little trap because a lot of players will go for bishop c5, which is a bad move. I think that's what I'm going to do. And it, when you play these e4, e5 openings, this diagonal is critical. And also this one, lots of tactics and tricky things happen along those diagonals. So I've seen this before. I am going to play bishop to c4. And I'm setting the little trap. If bishop c5 happens, I'll show you what we're going to do. I think there's a good chance we will see this move. I think that's a pretty obvious threat for black, but we'll see. Hey, there you go. All right. So obviously they're they're threatening here. And one way to deal with that would be to simply castle, which is fine. I could castle if they make that trade. I've said this before. Usually the, the knight and the bishop are better than the rook and the pawn. So I would be happy to get that. However, there's a different move here if you want to pause, or maybe you've already kind of had a chance to think about it. But the move is queen to d5. And the reason this is such a great move is twofold. Number one, it's threatening checkmate. So there's no longer a fork here that I have to worry about. If they would have taken with the knight, they would have just gotten checkmate. So they can take with the bishop, like we see here. But this allows me, and I'm trying to remember which one is better. One of these moves is, is better than the other, I think, by a little bit. Honestly, don't remember which one. They both have benefits and drawbacks. So the benefit of this move, in my opinion, is it leaves this file open if I want to put my rook here. The drawback is that I have to watch out for like knight to d4 in some situations. Maybe the knight can harass my king. This one, the benefit is it's safer. It's away further away from the pieces. But the drawback is I can't put my rook there. So it's a question of which one do I want. I'm going to go with king e2. But what else is going on in this position? This is more important. The reason why queen d5 is a good move is because there's still a checkmate threat. And there's a threat on the knight. And there's going to be a threat on the bishop. So, for example, after king to e2, I'm going to choose this one. I, I, like I said, I can't remember which one. But after king e2, black has a problem. You, you got to stop checkmate. But now your knight's hanging. You're losing a piece. And you can't really do both. Because if you try to go here, you, I would just take it. And there's no, no other moves. So I'm going to take the knight. And now the bishop has to move. So black has to waste some more time saving the bishop. And my king, it really isn't that in, much in danger. I mean, yes, I can't castle and it's in the center. But I have nice control over the center. And the fact that I'm up a piece is, is worth it. Okay, so they didn't realize that the bishop is now undefended. And uh, I think the simplest thing is we just take that. I'm I'm scanning, like, looking for some tricks. Like, I could jump in over here with the queen. I could also play bishop g5. Actually, bishop g5. So here's a, a good question. Is it better to play bishop g5, or is it better to take this guy? Well, let's think about what happens on bishop g5. The, the queen looks trapped. That's the first reason why I'm, I'm very much interested in this move. The queen is trapped. Now, you can play knight to e7, but what's the problem with knight to e7? Then you lose the rook. And a rook is better than a bishop, so that would be better for me. Okay, So the only move that I'm not sure about is f6. What happens after f6? So let's actually analyze this. Well, I have a queen lined up on the king, so I could take with check. And the king is actually trapped. So I'm not really seeing any good moves for black if I play bishop g5. So yes, it's good to take a free piece, but I think I have a more powerful threat. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and do that. 
go bishop to g5. And yeah, I think probably black's best move is to play knight to e7. Okay, they do go with f6, which like we talked about is going to allow the discovered check from the queen. And they have no good way to deal with that. You can't move the king to safety. So you have to block, and that's just going to lead to a, a fork. I'm trying to see if there's a, a checkmate somewhere in there. I don't see an immediate checkmate, but even just this fork is, is very nasty. It's, it's also a queen trap. Actually, it's also a queen trap. Wow. So we could force the queen trade, but why would I do that when I can take with the pawn and the queen is trapped, right? And you can't take me because it's checkmate then. But let's just scan. I'm just scanning like any like tricks like this or like this. But no, there's no checks. There's no really crazy moves. So we can safely take this and get the fork. And yeah, black is, is in trouble here. Okay, they do decide to take, which allows the, the checkmate. Okay. So I think, yeah, I'm. let's let's check. I think that might be... a about as close to a perfect game as we can we can get here. Let's see. Oh, 92. Nope. So maybe maybe the engine wanted uh, king f1. I'm actually going to check that just really quickly here. Let's see. What did it say? Um, let me turn this off for you guys. Queen d5. Great. Okay. Yeah, I wanted king f1 a little. Although it's, it's saying they're like super equal. Yeah, they're both really good. They're both really good. I already talked about the reasons. All right, that's pretty much it. Bishop g5 was the best move, yeah. So I think we pretty much played a perfect game there. All right, let's keep going. Didn't get a chance to do the Scotch Gambit, although you did get to see the the problem with knight to f6. And I think that is a common thing that, that you'll see. The key is, can you get a pawn there and force the knight to go somewhere awkward? That's the key, all right? So just remember that. Okay, let me update the wins here. And then we will jump into the next game. All right, so we're playing as black. Let's see, we're gonna see e4, d4, hopefully, play one of our gambits here. Against e4, we've got the bush gas gambit, and against d, wow, nope, okay. Knight to c3. I don't have any gambits against that. Um, I think I think we'll just probably try to get two pawns in the center, as normal, and let me think. What, let me just see my list here, if there's anything else that I could try to play against this. The perk, uh, we played the perk. Yeah, we'll, we'll play the perk. I don't want to abort. We'll play the perk again. It's It might be a weird setup, depending on what white's going to do, but... Okay, they transpose to e4. Interesting. Oh, you know what we could play? No, 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 I'll, I'll just stick with it. I was going to say we could try to go for a fishing pole trap, but we'll do we'll do another perk here. And maybe they're going to play d4, and we'll get like a sort of a normal position for the perk. Pierts, however you, you say it. I don't know which way is correct. People were correcting me in the comments, but I've heard it both ways. A3. Okay. Not really sure what's going on there. I think I'm just going to continue with kind of my normal setup here when you play this. Bishop G7, castles, and we'll go from there. It is important that you play D6 before the knight because you want to make sure you can recapture here if they push. Okay, so that's that's good. But now we're ready to go. We could fee in... Being Keto and Castle. All right, knight to f3. That's a good developing move. Let's go with bishop g7. And usually we're going to castle right away, unless white does something, you know, kind of crazy that, that would cause us to react. Otherwise, I'm probably just going to castle. Okay, never mind. They did They did do something that's going to cause me to react. Obviously, I'm not going to allow them to just take my knight. So, normally when they push, you're going to be taking this. Maybe I could consider moving the knight and just leaving it. But a lot of cases, taking it is, is good. It's going to open up the diagonal for our bishop, which is usually pretty nice. It also opens up the file for the queen. And it removes the pressure from our knight. So, this is usually the way to go. Okay, so we have a discovered attack. 
But do I have a a nice move with my knight to take advantage of that? Not really. I mean, I can move here, but that's a super obvious and easy threat to deal with. And my knight's on the edge of the board. I could move here, but that's probably just going to be a trade. Or they don't even have to take that. I, could, I can't go there because I lose it. So there's not really a good discovered attack. So I'm just going to leave it for now. Continue with my plan of castling. And we'll see what happens in a few moves. Maybe, maybe I'm just going to keep an eye on that, right? Just keep scanning for that. And we'll see what happens, okay? Sorry, that's not the way the bishop moves. And also, this guy needs to come out. This guy needs to come out. And, but I'm probably going to base my decision on what white does first. Okay, so bishop to b5. Um, it's not check, so I could just ignore it. But a lot of times what I like to do is play c6. I, again, I've said it before. I like the tempo gain. I like the fact that, oh, now you got to waste the time, waste some time moving your bishop back. And I also like that it gives my queen some nice options. So I think I will do that. This is a pretty common move in the in the perk anyway. I'm just thinking if there's anything else I want to do instead. Like knight here is a little bit tricky because maybe I end up getting a fork, but they don't have to take. They could just like move their bishop and then it's... Yeah, that's not a bad move, but I'm going to just go ahead and play c6, I think. I think c6 is good. Gain the tempo. And then let's the queen out to some nice squares. Now, I did take away a square from my knight. But I probably wasn't going to wasn't gonna go there anyway because it would have messed up my pawn structure. So I don't think that's a big deal. Okay, they go back. Now, I think, I think I see a nice move here. I think I see a nice move here. I mean, I say nice move. It's it, Queen to d4 just looks nice to me because it's hitting the knight. If the knight moves, then we take the bishop. And of course, if they go for this, remember, I'm happy. I'm happy to make that trade any day. So yeah, queen d4, let's do it. Another thing about queen d4 that's nice, that might be hard to recognize, is I'm stopping d4. And by stopping d4, I'm keeping the queen out of the game. I'm keeping the bishop out of the game. I'm keeping white from gaining space and supporting their knight. Like It, it stops this... There's a lot of ni nice things that happen for white once they play d4. And by me putting my queen there first, pawns don't move that way, right? You can't move through a piece. So it's, I'm blockading the pawn, essentially. Okay, so that's another very important reason. Okay, so they move the bishop, but they don't notice the knight. Okay, and so we're going to just take the free knight. Also, we check, so they can't castle. Remember, you can't castle if you're in check. I didn't know that one of my first tournaments I ever played in, I had a position like this, very similar to this, except my opponent just castled. <laughs> and then I ended up getting into a bad position and, and losing. And, and after the game, I was like, oh, they, can't, they weren't allowed to castle. But I didn't know that. I didn't know that rule when I first started playing chess. So, okay, they move the king to the side. Uh, I don't like that decision for, from them because now they can't castle forever. And I know what the king is going to be. All right, so what should we do now? Well, let's keep developing. And knight to d7 would block my bishop. So let's develop the bishop first. So the question is here, 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 or here. Well, not this one because I my knight might, might want to go there. Probably not this one. Usually you don't want to block these center pawns. Now that's not a terrible move since I've already feed kettled my bishop here. I don't have to come out this way. But these two look much more natural. This one looks good because it's in attack. I might lose some time on f3, but that's probably okay. And this one looks good because I'm up a piece. So trading when you're ahead is, is good. So I just talked about how like I don't like to lose tempo. Why would this be an exception? Because F3 here is going to weaken the king. It's, it's loosening up the position around the king. So that's an okay reason, I think, for actually going there. So I'm still torn which one is better. Um, we'll go with bishop g4. And I'll probably just drop it back to f5 after we've induced f3. So this is a rare circumstance where I, I'm allowing myself to lose a tempo because of the weaknesses around the king. I think it's worth it. This is an idea in... There's a different opening at, out of the Scandinavian that I like to play. Um, Portuguese Gambit, I think it's called. And it's the same idea where you just throw this out there immediately in the game and, and allow them to play f3 and then you go back. 
And the point is you've you've created these weaknesses and the, these diagonals now are open and it's much easier to get to the king, right? So that's the point. And now we offer the trade and okay, again, I'm very happy to see that. I'm very happy to see that. So do I want to trade? Yeah, I do. I'm up, my material trading is good. Let's go ahead. The other thing about this trade that's really nice for me, look at these pawns. It's very difficult for the bishop to get into the game because now there's two pawns that have to move before it can come out. Now, of course, you can do this, but yeah, this is not happening anytime soon. Okay, probably I want to get my last piece into the game. I could also consider just attacking this right away, like queen d4, just to put the pressure there. But I think, why not just bring more pieces in? That just seems like the best thing. So let's just play knight to d7. And now the rooks are ready to go. We can slide them to the, the open files if we need to. This isn't, they're not open files, but they, they could become open. So maybe here. And yeah, white's got a problem, right? This guy is stopping the rook. Notice how everybody's bottled up and these pawns are kind of a big problem. Going back to what I said earlier, right? When I played queen d4 to stop that. Very, very powerful idea to keep in mind. Okay, so... Um, because I'm a head material, remember I have three pieces and my opponent only has two, trading is, is good from that standpoint. It does uh, fix the pawn structure a little bit, so that might be a reason why I might not want to do that. I also like that it does open up my bishop, though. Um, so yeah, it's debatable. I think, ooh, maybe knight to c5 is a better move, because basically if I can keep this awkward pawn structure, I, I would like to do that. So knight to c5 said, look, you can trade if, if you want into me, but you don't fix your pawn structure. And I'm bringing a piece towards the action, threatening something. And I'm clearing the way for the, the file. Yeah, so that just seems like a really nice move. It does like so many different things all at the same time. And notice I'm not walking into a fork. I'm not walking into a fork because I'll just take it. Right, that's important. Otherwise, I, I could have eventually. All right, so they do take. So we'll recapture. And... I've cleared the file, like I mentioned, but also didn't fix the pawn structure. And uh, white still kind of has the same problem. So they're trying to fix it like this, which is not a terrible idea. So what, what should I do? What do you guys think I should do? Well, I think I should either play queen to d5 or queen to d4. And they both look good for different reasons. Now, this one looks good because it's putting pressure on both of these. This is an immediate threat, and then if the queen tries to like move away, then this is a secondary threat, also lined up on the rook. So that seems like a very nice square. This one also does the same thing here, but then it attacks the rook, and it stops bishop to b2. Now, I'm just wondering, like, am I going to regret that later? But I don't think so. So I think both of these look really, really good. Let me go with queen to d4. Also, it leaves this square open for my knight to jump in. I think there's a few more positives about queen d4 than queen d5, although both of them would have been totally fine. We're going to go with this one. Knight to d5 to f4, maybe rook over here. Assuming, of course, that white deals with, with the threats somehow. And actually, I don't know how they can deal with both of them now that I'm looking at it. So we might just be taking one of these pieces. Maybe just queen takes d3 after they save the rook. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, so they do defend the pawn, but the rook is is undefended, and I'm just going to scan. Like, knight to d5 seems like a very powerful move because it almost looks like it might lead to checkmate, but maybe white has some ways to defend and run with the king, so I think I will go ahead and grab, grab a free rook. A rook is a big piece, so I don't want to pass up that opportunity. And, of course, we can keep attacking after that, so knight to d5 next. Jumping over to f4. Also getting the rooks involved. Okay, so because they're attacking my knight, I will probably go knight to d5. Now there's also this fork if I want to just grab a pawn. But I think it's going to actually be more valuable for me to get this knight to an aggressive square. And so I'll just leave that there. I mean, maybe later, but this looks even more powerful. Queen and knight combo uh, on an exposed king, very, very dangerous. 
usually you can get some kind of a checkmate. Especially when the king doesn't have pieces defending it very well. So Okay. Um so yeah, I'm gonna just continue with the plan of of jumping that knight into that square with a check. This move didn't really affect that, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. And like for example, on king e3, there's already a checkmate. Queen to d4 is just checkmate. Okay. So the king has to go back somewhere. And then we have to figure out how to proceed. Well, you can't go here or here because of the bishop. But I think the only move is king d1. Or king f2. You can play king f2 because then the rook defends. So king f2 or king d1 seem to be the only moves for, for the white king. And I will probably just bring a rook in. Okay, they don't do one of the options. So that leaves the bishop. Uh, otherwise, I was probably just going to bring a rook in and just keep building up the pressure. But in this case, I'll grab the free piece. And if they go here, I'm going to take another free piece. If they go here, I could trade. But yeah, we'll just take this. And yeah, we have, uh, we have checkmate coming very soon. So the question of... What's what's I gonna do? All right, so do I see checkmate now? Is what I'm gonna be looking for. King goes here. Uh, we could play e5. Then the king goes here. I think that's checkmate. If they run this way, that is even worse. Probably. So let me just verify that here because I am gonna give up a piece. So you wanna make sure you're accurate here. E5. Checkmate, yeah, it looks good. So let's go queen to g2. And e5. Notice this and this. And so there's only a couple of options. Oh, king e3. I was thinking king e3. I guess king e3. Yeah, I guess that actually survives a little bit longer. King e4, there's checkmate right away. But king e3... I guess the game goes on for a few more moves. I actually didn't see that. Okay, yeah, this is what I was expecting, but I think they could have survived a little longer. Anyway, we'll go for the checkmate. All right, so good game to our opponent. And game review. 91, okay, not too bad. And well, let's go ahead. Right. 22 wins. And uh, let's see, do we have time for, yeah, we have time for maybe one more game. Maybe one or two, depending on how quickly this one goes. So let's jump in. Still unable to get our our openings. So we're going to try again for the Scotch Gambit. We're going to see if we can get it. Come on, Knight to C6, defend the... Oh, no. I don't know, guys. This is why you don't want to spend too much time memorizing openings, right? Because it you can't always use them. And uh, all right, we're just two pawns in the center. That's that's what we're gonna do. Okay, they move really quickly, and don't really deal with our threat. So I think I'm just gonna take it. And yes, there's potential queen trade, but I'm gonna be the one to initiate that, which means I retain my castling rights. They lose their castling rights, and when I take this pawn, I'm threatening a fork. So I, I like that. I like that. Okay, good move. They defend. So what I'm thinking is we develop and threaten at the same time. And yes, if it's a trade, that's fine because I'm up a pawn. So trading takes me closer to the end game. Okay, so let's go ahead, bishop c4. And I think they'll probably take it. They don't. Okay, so I think there's a tactic here. But if you guys want to pause, what is the tactic? What's the tactic? All right, so what did I threaten way back when, when I moved my knight here? Way back when, like two or three moves ago. Uh, I, I threatened the fork, right? But they defended it with the bishop, okay. And then I threatened the bishop. And now they defended it with the knight. But what do you notice about the knight? It's under attack. So I have ways to remove both of the defenders of the f7 pawn. The question is, which way should I do it? Which one should I take first? The answer is I need to take this bishop first. 
Because if I take here, I think it gives black the option to take here. And then it's like, well, yes, I could take it, but then they take me, and I actually don't get a chance to do the fork. But if I take this way, th this knight can't really do anything. They, they have to take me back. Otherwise, they lost a piece. Then I'm going to take here. And it's the same situation. They have to take me back. Otherwise, they lost a piece. But then I've successfully removed both of the defenders, and I could jump in. Okay, they decide to save the rook and, and just lose the knight, which is an option. Um, and, but I'm happy either way. So now I'll just move this guy. So the question is where to? I, I think I'll just throw in a check. It's not an easy check to deal with. And F4 also makes sense, but I'll just go with this one. If they come here, it walks into the fork that way. And so it looks like they have to go to E8. Looks like the only move is E8, right? Because this is controlled, this is controlled, this is controlled, this is controlled, and they don't want to go there. So yeah, King E8 only move. Okay. Well, uh, we're going to go for the fork, like I already talked about, okay? And, oh, we got the resignation. Okay, so yeah, that was quick, quick and short. Uh, let's check the game review. We'll have time to do another one now. 99.3, yeah, I thought so. And, guys, it's not, like, that impressive because it was such a short game and most of the decisions were pretty clear-cut. But, yeah, uh, there we go, okay. Let's go here, 23 wins. And let's jump into a new game. All right, so we got white again. Let's see. Can we get a Scotch Gambit? No. I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep playing E4 until we get a Scotch Gambit, my friends. All right, Alakine's defense. So there's two ways to play this. The, the best move is to push by. And you chase the knight around, and you, you, like, you get this pawn center. I don't like to do that, especially at the level level that I normally play at. And the reason is this. People who play this, they've studied it. Now, I don't think my opponent in this case has, but generally speaking, they've studied it. They know what they're doing, and it's it's just one of those annoying lines. So what I like to do is actually just play knight c3. And I don't think it's the best move. Like I said, I think e5 is the best move. But knight c3 is kind of like, all right, I'm going to avoid all your preparation. I'm going to avoid anything that you've maybe studied and just take the game into a different direction. Okay, like I said, it doesn't really apply at the 500 ELO level, but that's just what I do at, at the higher levels. Okay, 96. I'm going to get another pawn in the center, right? That seems very good. And now maybe I can start chasing these knights around if they... Okay, well, my opponent didn't do a blunder check, and I'm going to just take the knight. I don't really need to explain that too much. I don't think it's... <laughs> knights are three points, pawns are one. Good trade for me. D6, okay. So, I think, I mean, I don't see any, like, obvious weaknesses. I mean, I'm happy that I got the piece, but I don't see any obvious weaknesses. I think we just develop. And the rule is knights before bishops, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, C5, tax my queen. I should probably move the queen. Where to? I could go check. There's going to be bishop D7, but I do have bishop to B5, which probably would initiate some trades. Do I want to trade in this position, though? Yeah. I'm up a piece. If you're up a piece, trade some pieces, right? Why not? And I'm not like having to waste time doing it. I'm going to be developing a piece that I wanted to develop anyway. And so everything just kind of lines up to where this is probably a, a nice decision. Okay, so bishop to b5, here we go. All right, so which way should I recapture? I think the answer is knight here. And the reason is, is this. If I take with the queen, it's obviously check. They have to move. They're going to have to play queen d7, which I think is the best move. I generally try not to force my opponents to make the best move. If I take with the knight, now it's like they don't have to play queen d7. They can play something else. But if they do, guess what? This is actually going to be checkmate. This is a double check checkmate. Oh, there you go. Double check checkmate. And also, if they would have played queen d7, Going back to this position, just for a second. This is worth it, guys, to, to take the time. They would have played queen d7. What move could I have played? The answer is knight to c7 check. It's a fork, and the queen wouldn't be able to take me because it's pinned. So they'd have to play king d8. Then I could trade the queens first, and then I get a rook in the corner. Okay, so nice little tactic. But instead, they actually fell for the even worse um, double check checkmate. 
And I could do it either way. I could take here or I could go knight to c7. I kind of like knight c7, so we'll go for knight to c7. Double check checkmate. Because remember, when you're in um, double check, you have to move the king to get out of it, except you can't move the king in this situation. You can't take this because the queen. You can't block this because the knight. And uh, that's just a very nasty checkmate. Okay. In review, 91, all right. 24 wins. Let's let's go ahead and play another one. These games have been going pretty quickly, so we oh, we might actually get to um, 600. That'll be good. That'll be a good moment to stop. I think. Let's see. Can we get? Can we cross 600 here? Eight points. This will put us right at 600. Nathaniel Heckler. Good luck. Okay, D4. We might actually get to see one of the openings on our list: the Budapest Gambit. So the Budapest Gambit starts with knight to f6 against D4. And we're looking for the move C4. Okay, we're looking for the move C4 here. Ah, too bad. All right, too bad. The, the gambit is you play E5, and then we, we go from there. Against E3, I don't think we want to do that. I don't think that's a wise decision. So, um, what do I want to play? We'll play. We'll go ahead and play another another perk, I guess. Oh, interesting. They're going for a stonewall setup. Okay, interesting. So I'm going to continue with the, the plan here. Fien, Kettle, the Bishop, and Castle. One of the things about the stonewall, it, I actually like this opening for white, uh, but it does have one drawback. And the drawback, well, I say one, it has a couple drawbacks, but one of the drawbacks is the square on E4, right? They lose control of that with the pawns. Now, they, they gain something else instead, a very nice grip on e5, but we're going to keep an eye on this square on e4. The other thing about the stonewall is sometimes the bishop on c1 gets stuck for, like, the whole game. Now, there are ways that they can maneuver that around, uh, but a lot of times it, it does get, get stuck. Yeah, this is what the stonewall setup looks like. So, And it's a solid opening, by the way, for, uh, for white. Let's go ahead and castle. Basically, what White is doing is saying, look, I'm going to have this ultra-solid grip on the dark squares. I'm going to put my bishop here. Okay, queen b3, interesting. And they're probably going to castle. So let's think about how do we want to develop our pieces from here. Because there is this pressure on b7, which is a little bit annoying. So we have to decide, do we want to just leave the bishop there for now and develop some other pieces instead? I think that makes sense. Um, I mean, I would, I don't know if I would really want to go here anyway. It's not even a pin and I don't know if I, maybe I would want to go there, but since I can't, I think what I'm going to do is actually play knight to d7. This is a common move in the perk to develop and it helps you strike at the center with e5 and c5, which are pretty common moves. Yeah. Good move by our opponent developing their pieces. So let's think about this. E5. Takes, takes, takes. We're losing a pawn, but then we could jump in with knight to g4. And I think we're going to get our pawn back. So I kind of like that. Now, why would I like the idea of busting open the center right now? What about the position would make me want to do that? Well, it's primarily the fact that I'm castled and white is not. So I think if I can do something to just kind of bust things open, that's going to be good. And then I can maybe attack the king. All right, so let's see how White's going to handle this. I'm expecting like takes, 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 and then knight to g4, like I said. They could also go, yeah, so they take. We're going to take back. And it's a little pawn sacrifice temporarily, but this is a common idea. Whenever a pawn ends up on e5 and you're playing the, the perk, knight to g4 is usually a pretty good one. Now, I'm just noticing there's this move e6. I don't think our opponent will see that, but that actually might be a powerful move that I, I didn't consider. But the idea is we're trying to just take this back. And it's very difficult for white to hold on because we now have three attackers. Because when you play knight to g4, you get the knight, but you also unleash the bishop. So you get two attackers at the same time, which is usually a pretty, pretty good deal. Knight to e4, interesting move. Um, and I, I mean, I'm not sure what the idea is, but I think our plan doesn't change. I think we just recapture the pawn. Now, the question is which way, like which knight would I want to use? 
And I feel like we should take this one because it leaves this guy in a more aggressive square, also lets out our bishop. So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And what you'll notice is white has not castled. We have, and so, like I said, this is where opening up the center really starts to benefit us. Knight to g5, okay. So let's just, first of all, are they threatening anything? Well, not really. That's defended pretty nicely. Not super concerned with that. Okay. What about our threats? What can we do? Well, this is defended. I could almost take here and win the knight, but the problem is they could just recapture with their knight. Don't know how good that is. What what can I do to potentially stop them from castling long term? What about knight to d3 check? Because if they take me, guess what? I could take with my queen. And remember, you can't castle through check. Now my queen's in front of the king. The knight's ready to assist. The file is open. That looks pretty scary. So definitely knight to d3 seems like a move I should probably consider. I'm wondering, is that the best move though? Or is there something else that I could do? Like for example, h6 to force the knight back also looks pretty good. Oh, and here's why. Okay, here's why. Let's say I play h6. And let's say that the knight moves back to h3. What if I take this? Take here and go check. Very, very difficult situation I think for white to be in. So I kind of am actually leaning towards that, h6. As much as I like this, which also looks very good, I really think this is very difficult for them to handle. Yeah, I really do. Let me go with h6. I think it's just a much more powerful threat here. And notice I'm taking advantage of this diagonal that was opened way early on when they decided to play the stone wall right? But it didn't happen until I was able to kind of bust open the center. And once you bust open the center, then the files, the diagonals, everything's opened up. That's when these tactical opportunities pop up. Okay, so that's kind of the point. That's why you, you do want to break open the center at the right time. Okay. Now, I think white's best move might be to not retreat and actually try to trade. Okay, they don't they don't see that. That's a very advanced thing to see. They do save the knight. But now, like I said, we can take. Forces the recapture, and then it opens up the square. And it does two things, really. Gets rid of the knight, so we can go there. But also moves this pawn over here to where you can't block on g3. Normally you would be able to go g3, but now you can't. And, and that's going to cause white to have to move their king, which is not what you want to do. Okay, so let's go ahead, make the trade, and jump in here. All right, let's go queen h4. And white is in big trouble at this point. And because on top of the fact that you can't castle is, is also that my rooks are about to come into the game, right? All right, very interesting moment. And I think so many moves are like, I would like to play. So let's let's think. What do you guys think we should probably focus on here? There's one thing that's jumping out at me is like I should probably focus on this. Well, I think the answer is the bishop. I think the answer is the bishop. I think if we develop the bishop, then we can get both rooks here. And also on top of that, the king's on a light square, which means the bishop could play a role in that. Now, my knight's also attacked. But what I'm thinking is if that gets captured, I don't really care because I'm jumping in here with a fork and it's going to force the king to the d file where a rook's coming over. I'm very happy to allow that to happen. But in the meantime, I think I'm going to go bishop e6 because it's a tempo gain. Remember, tempo is important because it doesn't give my opponent time to defend and come up with defensive moves. So that's what I'm going to prioritize. Don't even care about this pawn. It doesn't mean anything anymore. Right Earlier in the game, I cared about it, but now I don't care why. Because the only thing that I care about now is checkmating the king. So who cares about a pawn? I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. And, and we're going to get checkmate. Okay, that's, that's the plan.
Queen to b4, interesting move. So it is lined up here. So I want to be a little careful. I don't like move my knight and just lose the queen. But apart from that, I don't see too much to worry about. So I think we continue. And it's just a question of which rook do I want to move first. Um, I'm going to say this one looks pretty good because it just takes away all the squares from the king. I'm, I'm gradually kind of cutting off all the options, and then we're going to start looking for ways to get checkmate. Okay. This rook, I think, is coming next. Again, I'm still not really concerned about this because this uh, is so powerful, so white can't really afford to take my knight. All right, rook to g1, interesting. So now they are threatening to take it because now if I did that, the queen would actually be able to take. So I probably do at this point need to react somehow to that threat. So let's think about this. Um, we have a couple of options. Option number one is maybe I just defend. And the idea is that now again, I'm... I'm Threat is there, you can't take it. So that seems like the most obvious. The only other thing is like, could I just ignore it and just play rookie eight? And the idea is after this, do I have some sort of follow up? Yeah, I'm not totally sure. So I think I will play h5. I don't see exactly what the follow up is. So I think I will play h5 just to stop, to stop the capture. And one thing that's a little bit uncomfortable about the position for me, honestly, is this pin. The pin, I don't really like that. So I might be looking to maybe move my queen off of there just to get get out of that so that I can safely, like, like for example, I can't play a move like this because my queen, which I don't love, okay? E4, never mind. There's no more pin now. Um, E4 lets out the bishop. I don't know what else it does. I mean, now I can safely take the pawn. Now I can actually safely take the pawn. Oh, there's bishop g5. Very, very interesting move because bishop g5 actually would trap my queen. So I have to be a little careful. So maybe I should stop that. Maybe the move is bishop f6. Yeah, bishop f6 seems really good. Let's go bishop f6. This is a very sneaky move, actually. Then my queen has nowhere to go. Very sneaky. So let's go bishop f6 to, to defend that. Clever move by our opponent. I have to give it to them. That's not the kind of move that, I, that I'm that i used to 600 rated players making. So, now, did they intend that? I don't know. But um, the fact that it's there is, is kind of scary. All right. So, E5. Again, this is pinned. So I can't take there. Oh, if I take with a bishop, then again, they're going to do that. Oh, wow. What a clever guy. All right. Hmm. So maybe I just go here. Maybe I go here, sacrifice the bishop, because if you take the bishop, then you're walking into checkmate. Yeah, I think that's the move. So let's go rookie eight. But very, very, very tricky. I mean, this is this is some tricky stuff here that our opponent is doing. But this is very powerful. Okay, so they finally make a, a big mistake here. Fall for the checkmate. And it's, che it's checkmate because, again, the king can't move, okay? King cannot move. So if we check it with a double check, it's game over, right? It's game over. So bishop c4 is checkmate. But very, very nice moves by our opponent. Um, very, very tricky. Yeah, Nate Heckler. I don't think they're going to be 600 for too long finding moves like that, honestly. That was, that was some good stuff. All right. 65. Okay, I guess it wasn't as good as I thought it was, but the, the trick... The tactics at the end were very, very tricky. All right. Okay, guys. 25 wins. We're at 600. Unfortunately, we didn't really get to see any of the new openings. I'll try again next time. Bush Gas Gambit, Budapest Gambit, Scotch Gambit. They're still on my list. I really want to 
you know, get those played. If you, excuse me, if you have other openings that you want to see, let me know in the comments. Upvote somebody else's request so it moves to the top so I can see them. I'm going to keep adding to this list and circling back as we go through the different rating ranges and playing different openings. So, all right, guys, I'll see you next time. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Stay sharp, play smart, and take care.